convinced as well because it was so real mm. and the information given would be so real. Yeah. 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 Something happened uh, 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 at this point. Uh, I mean, your your, your mother uh, tragically spent time in the psychiatric ward and then eventually committed suicide. How did that? I mean, obviously that affected you personally and and emotionally, um, obviously. How did it also affect you from the psychic point of view? Did you feel well, uh, if this is the way you go, I don't want to go, or, well, yeah, I want to contact her and speak to her. What emotions were going through your, your mind at that point in time? Well, thankfully, I had become a Christian before okay. that yeah. happened. Um, she got to the stage where um, she was developing to become a medium. She was going through all the development classes. Um, she was coming on leaps and bounds. But um, what started to happen was she could no longer control the spirit guides. They were now choosing when to come through her. She could be, I, w I was with her a few times at the shops, uh, walking along the, the street and the spirits would come through her, take control when she didn't want to um, and take over. Really, they did it to such an extent where her life was not her own anymore. Um, at this point, she wanted out because there were so many spirit voices, they all wanted to give messages to the neighbours, to passers-by, to, she just, you know, it was getting to the point where she didn't know her own thoughts anymore because they were always talking through her. Um, so she tried to get help from the mediums in church and, and other psychics that we knew. They tried to help, but it wasn't really helping. And we started to also, around about this time, heard rumours of lots of other psychics who were going through the same thing, even mediums who were trained who were having this problem or having poltergeist activity in their house and they weren't able to cleanse it or, t or to control it. Um, so that we started to get disillusioned with it then right. when that started to happen. And, and this, of course, begins to put the question mark. As you say, you'd become a Christian before, and we'll come back to that in just yeah. a minute. I know we've jumped ahead a bit, but the, but this begins to put the question mark in, doesn't it, as to where the actual power comes from. Because if this is a power that wants to seek to dominate and control, one has to question whether it has your best interests at heart, don't, don't, don't you? Totally, yeah, and it th did become confusing because we thought, why now have our spirit guides turned against us? Um, they attacked my mother, they threw her about the house. Um, I was talking about shopping several times. She was picked up and thrown over cars, over the bonnets of cars, that type of thing. The dead relatives, like apparently my grandmother and that kind of thing, had always been kind and given advice. Suddenly they turned against us and would shout obscenities at us so it was it was confusing as to why is this happening and is there another power actually behind mm -hmm. they're not really our relatives after all or our mm. spirit guides after all right so yeah but it wasn't till later on i found out from scripture yeah the, the truth of that yeah so let, let's build up to that now i mean we're going back a little bit of time obviously be before your your mother's tragic death but um what caused you to start questioning uh, the whole psychic realm and to seek and eventually to find uh, Christ as your saviour. How did that begin? Really because of what was happening in the house. My mother was losing control. The spirit guides were harassing her so much. Um, sometimes they would force her into a trance. Once the, the kitchen went on fire and she didn't realise it happened, the whole kitchen was up in flames because they had took her away in a trance and she, she didn't know, she sure. just didn't know what was happening. Um, so that's what made me question that I stopped going to the spiritualist church then, although I actually still believed in it because it's all I ever knew. Um, and then eventually I went to university. I was in second year studying psychology and a, a lady, a Christian, came alongside me, we became friends. And by this point, my mother was taken and put into the psychiatric ward because the spirit guys were telling her to kill neighbours mm. and kill people. So the police were 
getting complaints about my mum. The doctor had complaints about my mum. Um, she, she felt she had to do it because the spirit guides were telling her to do it. So, but, but then it was obvious that her, her mind was so badly affected. So I told Susan this and um, she surprised me by saying that Jesus could help with this. Um, well, I hadn't read the Bible before, so I wasn't very sure at first uh, whether or not to believe her. But she explained that she went to a Pentecostal church where some of the members had been involved in spiritualism before or psychic phenomena before and they had had horrible experiences too, whether poltergeists or similar experiences. But once they became a Christian and asked Jesus into their heart, Jesus had cleansed their house where mediums before had failed to cleanse their house so that was beginning to make sense to me mm -hmm. yeah so you were hearing these things um comparing them with what you you were seeing um how did that lead you finally tell us in detail how you really became uh, a, a christian and left behind the life well had been your whole life since you were born up until that point um well susan invited me to her church several times. At first I didn't want to go because I'd been so disillusioned and everything that happened to my mother. I didn't want to think about any kind of faith again. But the more she said Jesus could cleanse your house, well my mother's house was still haunted. My flat still was not so clear. Um, and then she said there's a, a, a Christian coming with the gift of prophecy. Now that attracted me because as a spiritualist I was used to prophecies, yeah. gifts of predictions, yeah. uh, abilities to heal, miracles, all that kind of thing. And I didn't know that, that some Christians had these gifts. I just didn't realise that. And she explained to me, yes, um, Christians can have the gifts of healing, prophecy, tongues, miracles, signs and wonders. So as a psychic I thought, wow, that attracted me. Um, so I went along because a prophet was there, um, but obviously I heard the gospel and I heard about Jesus and for the first time I thought, gosh, you know, this, this could be real and I hadn't really considered before that it was real. Um, so that was my first time in the Pentecostal church and I loved the atmosphere and obviously the presence of God was there and, and touched me for the first time. Yeah. yeah. So you heard the message. <laughs> Um, you began to see that there were now two realms. <laughs> there, that God has got his supernatural realm, as I always mm. say, his supernatural realm's got a big S and Satan's supernatural realm's got a small S. But you saw these two realms, you, you heard the message for the first time. What did you do? Well, that night I went home and I hadn't really looked at a Bible before, but strangely enough, that day before we went to the church, I had a Bible ready to take to a charity shop, so it was sitting at the front door. <laughs> but as soon as I got in, I opened the Bible, mm -hmm. and I was starting to get a bit confused because I thought, well, maybe Jesus is just a psychic. Maybe it's all just psychic phenomena. You know, is he really the Son of God? Um, I kind of was kind of a bit frightened as well that night with the spirits because I sensed they weren't pleased I had been there to the to the Christian church. Um, so I prayed. And I asked God, if Jesus is real and if he is the saviour, will you please show me what to do and what should I do about spiritualism? Um, I had a verse that was basically get out of spiritualism, um, which really did give me a fright because I suddenly realised what I had been involved in. And over the next couple of days, a few more scriptures came to light and really explained it all to me, which I've got these yeah. scriptures here, yes. if, yeah. if I can yes, read them. read them, yes. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 Let no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells or who is a medium or a spiritist or who consults the dead. And it goes on to say these things are an abomination to God. So I got a fright reading that and then uh, 2, Corinth 2 Corinthians chapter 11 For such men are false prophets and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light 
It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Mm. Mm. And I realised the spirit guides were not benevolent spirits and the so-called dead relatives were not our dead relatives because w they did turn against us, they became evil. Right. And it made sense, well no wonder they suddenly turned against us and attacked yeah. us yeah. because spirits can impersonate any person who ever lived. Right. They were masquerading as our relatives and pretending to be them. Just they were imposters, basically. So that led you to give your life wholly to Christ. Yeah, and and repent, deal with the past, open up the new life. Is is that what you did? Yes, I, I realised I had to throw everything out the house and indeed Christians in, in that church recommended I do that. Right. Um everything involved in the occult, I burned it. Mm -hmm or destroyed it in other ways and just repented of it. Obviously needed to, to ask Christ to forgive me for that, cleanse me for that, um, have deliverance ministry for it, um, just have the whole past wiped out. Was, how easy was that, Laura, to, 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 to deal with all the past? Well, did it happen just like that or was it an ongoing process for a while? How easy was it? It was easy to throw everything out and destroy yeah, everything yeah, because yes. when you suddenly realise these spirits are demons and evil spirits, you don't want anything to do with it. So it was easy to clear everything out. But the thought processes, the memories, that kind of thing, that was more of a process. Of you. Yes. More of a, the deliverance was more of a process and that doesn't happen overnight. But with Christ, you do walk through that and he does lead you through that. So uh, what did you have specific prayer? And uh, to, to really cut you off from the past, was, was, was that part of your process of deliverance? Definitely. I think that is absolutely a must. If anyone has dabbled in these things, you really do need specific prayer for that to be totally set free from it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think it'd be quite difficult to continue your Christian life without having that all dealt with and totally, totally be set free from it to really be able to grow and mature as a Christian. Right. And the replacing of the the sort of the worship and 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 the, of the spiritualist church with God's word and uh, and church family. How important has that been for you? Very important. Yeah. Uh, pr probably in the beginning it was really quite crucial because. I had been used to spiritualists around me, which was a, a, like a family, yeah. a church family, and suddenly that's gone. So you do need a new church family. Um, also, when you were so used to dealing with spirit guides and getting advice from them, there could be a kind of a vacuum um, if you don't turn to the Holy Spirit straight away and seek him for guidance and advice and comfort. Mm. Yeah. Laura? Thank you so much for sharing you, things Doug. with us today. It's, it's been great. And what a change has taken place in your life. If you feel there's a change that needs to take place in your life, please contact Revelation TV so that we can help you further. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing with us. And may the Lord lead you into freedom and deliverance. Mm -hmm.